Good morning everybody and hope this wintry morning finds you well and warm in your homes. Um, look forward to the days when we'll be meeting together again face to face at River Life. But till then, what a privilege that we can still connect and share our lives with each other. So today I'm going to be sharing the word with you. Uh, literally, a word. It's a very little word, but a very powerful word. I'm going to be looking at the word but. So if you were going to title my sermon anything it would probably be i like big butts so just bear with me so the word but is a is a very powerful word for such a small word it has huge impact on how we do life and um, let me give you an example so if someone was to come to you and they've they've hurt you or offended you and they come and say i'm so sorry but da 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 the but negates everything that came before. The apology has just been wiped out because the but changes the whole dialogue of the conversation. And um, the word but negates or cancels everything that went before it. And it's generally accepted as a signal that the really important part of the sentence is coming up. When we find a but in a sentence, anything that follows a but, that's the important stuff. And when you use it, most people listening to you will give more attention and more weight to what you say after the but. So I'm fascinated by the buts that happen in scripture, where something has been happening, there's been a, a storyline, a trajectory, but, and then lives are forever altered. And we find it right the way through scripture. There's these moments of collision when, when storylines and trajectories of lives and destinies are altered. By, by our Heavenly Father. And that gives me a great hope because like sometimes, like now where we're sitting in the COVID situation, the world is speaking a trajectory to us that we can get caught up in of where life seems to be taking us. And we feel hopeless and we feel caught up in just being swept along with whatever the language of the day is. But God can break in and shift and change and give us a new reality. And, and that's what I hold on to. Um, the, for me, the study on the word but has been almost like exercising my, my muscles of hope of that I can keep constantly expectant of but God will break in, but God can change something, but God can shift our realities to something more. So that's what I'm looking at the, the word but. So, I mean, it, it comes up in our, in our hymns, Amazing Grace, I Sweet the Sound, Saved the Rich and Me, I Once Was Lost, but now I'm found was blind but now I see it's it's this powerful thing of it doesn't matter what came before from the moment of the encounter lives are forever changed I mean all of us have had our but God moment that that's why we we're following him today because our lives are on a trajectory of of selfishness or 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 isolation or anger or whatever we were in our fallen state but God found us saved us and gave us an entirely different future and destiny and whatever came before the but God moment has been washed away and so I just love the fact that when we encounter God we are forever changed and shifted and in any moment in any storyline in any narrative a God encounter can change things and they they often are sudden things and unexpected things so I'm learning to keep my heart open for the sudden unexpected of God in these crazy seasons and yes it's down to a three-letter word that's not particularly profound but i think in a way is life-changing because in in these crazy seasons with so many voices and so many things going on i like to simplify the gospel down to simple truths that i can hold on to that that can be a, a, a clarity to me in in all the noise and so for me it's just been a case of i want to find the but god moments of how God has changed things and how God can change things because that is my hope. So if, if you don't mind, we'll just quickly go through a couple of scriptures that have been a great encouragement to me with big butts. So um, Psalm 73, 26, how's this for a beautiful encouraging scripture? My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. That, that lifts and encourages us. How's this coming off Paul's um, study on Galatians, just on how the gospel is such good news for us, how it changes us and just gives us a whole different future. Titus 3 verse 3 says, For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, 
passing our days in malice, envy, hated by others and hating one another. But when the goodness and loving kindness of our God and our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of the works done by us in righteousness, but according to his mercy, by the washing and regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. It's like it doesn't matter what our history and our past was. When we encounter God, we get this whole new destiny and inheritance. It's like this, this balancing point, this tipping point that can change our destiny. I love the gospel. That's the good news. But God rescued us. Um, the, how's, how's another one? I mean, look at this for the story. So remember with the, Paul and them when they were locked up in jail? And so they, the Sadducees and Pharisees weren't so happy with them, got them thrown into the, the prison. And they're in there. And their situation looked pretty bleak. bleak. I suppose it's like the original lockdown. So they in there, they can't get out, they can't get around. There's this passion burning inside of them for the gospel to spread, but literally they're in lockdown, the real deal. But God sends an angel, sets them free, earthquakes, a whole lot, they, they get out, life goes on. God encounters, not what they expected. God's encounters with us, our but God moments are often not how we thought it would work out, how we thought it would play out. But God always turns things for our good. You look at someone like Joseph, so he had the the word spoken over him of being um, this mighty ruler, et cetera, et cetera, this incredible inheritance spoken over him. And then he sold into slavery, falsely accused, stuck in jail. It's like, God, you say this, but my life is looking like this. His, his fulcrum is looking like it's tipping this way. But God turns it around and he gets to encounter with the Pharaoh, gets all the moments that we'll know when, when we read the story. And it even goes so far as to say when Joseph eventually spoke to his brothers, when they were so broken about the journey that he had gone on, he says, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. I love that no matter how desperate our situation looks, no matter how contrary to the destiny we know God has placed inside of us, God can turn it around for our good. And that's what fills us with hope in any given moment, in any given situation, but God. Um, look at the Israelites when they came out of Egypt and now they're wandering around the desert and they're hungry and f like they need food and they need water. And they were crying out their bellies were empty. But God broke in and gave them manna, not the expected. I mean, th they must have been wondering how is gonna, God going to feed so many millions of people in a moment? And he comes up with manna. It's a but God moment, a solution, a, a, a breakthrough, a freedom that was unexpected. Um, yeah, so... There's just constantly, when you, when you read through the word of God, look for the word but. Because I find that every time it, it comes in in a statement or, or sentence, what follows is a freedom and a liberty and a destiny and a breakthrough that I want to live in. It, it fills me with hope. And when God speaks of an alternate future for us, we will look at a situation, we'll feel overwhelmed, we'll feel like there's no hope, we'll feel like we're stuck but God will break in bring freedom bring liberty bring life we could be struggling with our health but God could heal us but God could take us to be with him either way it's a win God wins with whatever hand he's dealt so yeah so but God breaks in so I realize there's this when I see but in my life when I'm looking in terms of what the Father does for me, it's always in terms of this almost like tipping scale. So I have where I'm at, what I'm thinking, my negativity, a but God moment, and then this change in perspective, change in position, change in destiny. And I'm sitting at this tipping point of I can look at the negative of where life is, what my situations feel like, what my emotions are telling me or i can put my focus on the heavenly father but god you can break into this moment you can change it and when i turn from my perspective to god's perspective i find that things level out and there's hope and there's life and there's destiny and i'm, I'm filled and restored with faith again and we have to learn how to keep our eyes on him on the fact that he can change things he can bring things he can break things through for us He's redeemed us. He saved us from ourselves. He saved us from the path that we're on. But God has broken in and changed us through. And then 
There's also some other buts that I find come up in my life. Some of them are my excuses. So when I'm feeling something from God, or it'll be like, he's challenging me on something, I'll go, but God, and I come up with an excuse. I look at things, all, all the reasons why I can't, all the reasons why I shouldn't. But God, and it's like tipping the point back to not being a person of hope. So I'm trying to recalibrate my heart to, but God, yes, you. Whatever you say, I will do. So I've actually found a couple of scriptures that have been incredibly helpful for me to just look at the but God moments that he calls me to and how I posture myself in this season. So I just want to give you four good ones that have been big buts for me. Psalm 73, 26 says, My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is my strength, my heart and my portion forever. I hold on to that. 2 Timothy 2, 1 verse 7. For God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. I have to choose in the moment when I'm starting to feel fearful of whatever the situation is. That's not my portion. God has given me power, love, and a sound mind. And I choose to reorientate myself back to that. When I'm fearful, but God, I will follow him. Romans 12 verse 2. We all know this one. Don't be conformed to the pattern of this world, but... Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That is by the testing you may discern what the will of God is, what the good and acceptable and perfect will is. I have to choose. It's almost like that but in the sentence is whether I'm going to be conformed to the pattern of this world, but I will choose to be transformed. It's a turning moment in any given situation, whether we're going to put our focus on God or the situation we find ourselves in. And then my favorite scripture of all time, like my life verse, I love this one. Philippians 3 verses 12 to 14 says, Not that I've already obtained this or am perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. I don't consider it, I've made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining towards what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. It's like this, it's this tipping point again. It's, I'm going to forget the past. I'm going to forget my mistakes. I'm going to forget situation and circumstance and where I've made mistakes. I am, but I'm going to press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Any situation, nothing is hopeless. Nothing is too much. Nothing is impossible. God can feed with manna. He can send an angel to get you out of jail. He can provide finances when there isn't. He can bring healing when we have no hope. He can restore relationships when we think that we are isolated and social distancing. And yet God can restore relationships even with distance. But God, we Satan may have a plan. But God can turn it into something so beautiful and so sweet. And like now in our season of lockdown and and um, COVID and all that stuff. But God, I will choose to look at what he has given me. What, what strength, what friendship, what um, just the blessing of the things that he's given us. Of people in our lives who we love. Of people who we can connect with. And so in this season of that we find ourselves in. Let's choose to keep our eyes focused on who he is. That we'll never be overwhelmed by situations. That the, our hearts cry is, but God, you can do anything. But God, you have taken me from where I was and you're putting me on a new trajectory of who you see me to be. But God. So I won't have fear. I won't be intimidated. I won't lose hope. Because my God in his word gives me strength. So... I love looking through the word for the big buts, for the alternate realities, for the change in destiny. It's like when you're watching a movie and someone is like going to down a river and they're drowning, but someone comes in and rescues them. Um, the Israelites running from the Egyptians, they hit the Red Sea, there's no hope, they can't get across, but God makes a way for the sea to open. It's the, all of us have been binge watching TV, that's the, that's the, the, the hero coming in, changing the, the story, changing the destiny, bringing hope. That's who God is to us. But God, we will always keep our hope, keep our faith, 
because God is always good. And that's God. Who knows what can happen? Who knows where we'll be? Let's pray. Father God, I thank you that you are a good God, that you are a God who's for us, that you are a God who is powerful, that you are on the throne and you reign supreme over every situation and every circumstance, Father. And so, Lord, we just choose to fix our eyes on you, Father God. We choose to live with full of hope and anticipation of what you're going to do, Father God, that we choose not to be overwhelmed by situations and circumstance, whether it be health or finances or loneliness, Father, you can turn anything around for us, Father, and we will fix our eyes on you, knowing that breakthrough will come, Lord Jesus. Father, thank you that you are so good, that you love us so dearly, that you have been so generous to us, Father. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.